hands up. And that means it's Q&A time. It's been a while since we've done a Q&A, um, but we've had a recent wave of really good poignant questions. So thank you for that. Um, so we've decided to do a bit of a out of, out of the vlog mega Q&A. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Okay, so how, long, how are we going to do this? Question, we're going to do... Okay, so we have some really good questions um, and a lot of them are kind of on the same thread. So we thought that we would um, put them all together and answer them. We usually do about one minute for each question, but this time we're going to expand it a little bit and have um, 15 minutes total. Alright, as yep. many as we can do in 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 15 minutes starts now. No. Alright, question one. Uh, this is from Sailing Someday. Uh, he said, just curious. How has it been with four adults on board? Do you find that Millennial Falcon accommodates that number well? And if you were given the chance to go back in time and give yourself advice, would you buy Vancouver again? Really, really good question. Great question. Really good question. Okay, first of all, I guess I'm going to answer the beginning bit. Let's, yeah, yeah. All right, so you four adults you. on board. Um, no, no, we'll both answer actually, yeah, yeah. because I might say like, four adults on board was Time, fun. time, time, let's go, okay, ask sorry. the question. Uh, ATFQ. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Answer the questions. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that for fully grown adults on board, um, we actually surprisingly worked quite well together. I feel like it was okay. Tall people might <laughs> not necessarily be okay in the, this boat. 6'3 um, is the line. Yeah. In the V-birth more so, like sleeping more so than anything else. Um, <clears throat> but probably someone slightly below six foot would be fine to sleep in the V-birth um, and fully stretched out. But in terms of moving around, movements and stuff, we were pretty good with four people. Yeah, I'd agree with Thoughts? that completely. Um, the particularly the layout, like all Tayanas are semi semi custom, so no, none of them have the same layout. Uh, a lot of them have common fe features. But this layout, we have the master cabin in the back and the V berth in the front, and a head in the back and a head in the front, oh, and yeah. the kitchen in the middle. So it's almost perfect for two couples. Um, because you have a common area in the middle and your own space and your own bathroom front and back. Um, so yeah, that, it was really ideal for four people, yeah. um, particularly two couples. Any more than that would be a stretch because you'd have to have someone sleeping in the common area. Um, so if I could wish for anything, I would, uh, I would wish for some, some, like a, a, a bunk room, like a, another room somewhere yeah. that was, um, had two bunk beds just for those extra extra berths uh, uh, but yeah. and second part of the question if you were given a chance to go back in time and give yourself advice would you buy this boat again would you buy vancouver again definitely that's my answer yeah i think um it's a big boat and it's an old boat there are many aspects that i might change but in terms of buying this boat again yeah, yeah i would this vancouver i think is yeah is suitable for our upcoming needs. Was suitable for our prior needs, and it's easily handled by a small, by a short-handed yeah. couple. Like it's 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 very sea kindly. It's forgiving. It's quiet. It tracks well. It it, it handles a blow. Yep. Um, and we you can feel grow safe with it. on it, and it's capable of much much more than we are. One thing to perhaps contrast what we what we've just said about how great it is one thing that does give me the heebie-jeebies is um actually a center cockpit i don't know if i'm married to that anymore yeah I when i started i was very dogmatic about no center cockpit is great because if you get a chasing sea over the back you won't flood it and blah 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 you're high and dry and you're you're closer to all the yeah. everything's closer to the center etc 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 but the massive downside is that you really have trouble getting to the boom to access the sail uh, for, for furling and reefing. Yeah. Um, which is kind of a nuisance. And the, Putting I the sail back into the bag, yeah. it's just a nightmare every single time. I haven't seen enough. Uh, and I'm obviously, if you have a center cockpit, you then get these lovely massive master cabins in the back, which I do very much enjoy. So I'm not against center cockpits, but I would be less dogmatic about it in future. Um, yeah. I think it is quite large, not in terms of its sailing, like in our ability to sail it, but I think um, in terms of how much there is to fix, I guess. Um, do I need two bathrooms? 
after just saying that there were four people on board and it was handy yeah. to have two bathrooms that also means that there's double the amount of stuff to fix um and extra weight extra length means that everything needs to be a little bit beefier um so it's a great boat i think um i could have gone smaller a little bit smaller maybe i certainly wouldn't yeah. go bigger that's for sure yeah all right next question nick stokes a question for you both how much boat maintenance and mechanical knowledge brackets experience did you both have before embarking on your awesome sailing adventures cheers and love the videos thank you for the question nick um great question oh how much boat maintenance or mechanical knowledge i had an absolutely zero nothing zilch um, no, you're too nothing. hard. Harshness. Boat, knowledge? Yeah, boat no. knowledge? No. I had a keen enthusiasm for mechanical things. Like, my dad is really into cars. And I remember, like, years and years and years ago, I was like, I really feel like I would like to try and do something with cars or build a car when I'm older, like something like that. So I, I wanted to do that in my life. Mm. I. So, to, to come full circle, I used to work at this place called Kennard's Hire in Australia back when I was in university or college, as you would say. Um, and that's like a, a plant hire machinery kind of company. They hire out like boom lifts and generators and trailers and all kinds of things like that. And I was a serviceman slash delivery driver. So I would spend all my weekends in a workshop stripping apart two, uh, two KVA generators and boom lifts mm. and two stroke motors and, and changing oil and filters and all this stuff, which, you know, compared to your average person is 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 it's not insignificant yeah, experience so i was cu comfortable on the tools however had i ever worked on a diesel engine like in anger under pressure before no. in anger well no not under pressure like have i ever been stuck and needed to get it started and and yeah. and you know not knowing what was wrong no have i ever dealt with like bleed air or a broken lift pump no like but the the fundamentals i had a a foundation in and and that has helped me build on that so and I think that's all you need. That's all anyone can hope for. You can't develop experience yeah. without going out there and trying things. And you can't go out there and try things if you wait to know everything before you go. <laughs> so true. you just have to go and have a, the best grasp you can on the fundamentals and just keep grappling with it until the penny drops. To answer your question, not we had some, not enough. It's never enough. We had an, just just what we needed to get started. Yeah. Good question. All Thank right. you, mate. Next question. Question for Q&A. What Play. is the semicircle bracket three quarters of the way up the mast called and what does it do? I believe Tayana 42s are the only model with that feature. Thanks. Thank you, Clay Farnett. Sorry if I said that wrong, mate. Um, excellent question. I actually wanted to answer that one for a while. Mm. We're getting a bit of a sun glare through here, though. Um, no, we're good. Um, I've wanted to answer that one for a while because you're right. It is unique to Tayana 42s um, and it is very cool and they need a diagram for this. I'm going to try without the diagram, so stick with me. So a set in a nutshell, it's called, I believe it's called a cow catcher. And what it does is remove the need for running backstays by introducing, it, it's essentially a diamond stay in a way. So what it does, if you can imagine the baby stay, which the staysail is attached to, runs two thirds of the way up the mast and meets the mast exactly where the cow catcher ring is. So when, and we have no running backstays, so that that baby stay is not supported by a backstay in any way, which is where running backstays would come in. What this cow catcher does is it puts a ring, as you know, at the attachment point for the baby stay and then, and then stretches two diamond stays over the ring. And when the baby stay pulls on the mast at that point, you're creating a bow in the mast, which then causes the cow catcher ring to shift forward which then puts the diamond stays under tension and the diamond stays are attached at the top of the mast and at the lo at the uh, first set of spreaders which are reinforced by the lowers so you're essentially shifting the load from the baby stay onto the top of the mast and onto the first set of spreaders which essentially is provide in a roundabout way is providing backstay support that the running backstays would otherwise provide by sh by putting that that cow catcher ring under tension when it shifts forward under load i hope that answered your question i actually didn't um, know that you didn't know it's that? good to know yeah it's, it's really cool um my, <laughs> i knew what it did I, I didn't know how i didn't figure that out for myself i had the same question it is very unorthodox and uh most Tay like the, <laughs> the only the first tayana, tayana owner i met jesse uh he came straight up and he, and he pointed to that he said do you know what that does and i said no do you and he, and he told me exactly that answer so <laughs> all right next question um, 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 Bob Bates, 
Uh, how far over? How far over has your boat healed? Um, I see that you have a gauge in your boat, and figure you likely have one on the bridge deck as well. It seems from what I've read about your boat with a big, heavy, full keel, um, that it doesn't heal over nearly as much as many newer boats. That to me is a big selling point. Yours? Okay. Um, I think I think I might have clocked it in at twenty one time, um, and that was probably the <coughs> most that our boat has ever healed. The tow rail has nearly been in the water, but it's never actually been in the water. Yeah. Um, we've got quite a high topside. Um, freeboard. Freeboard. And so we don't often go that, like, heel that far over. Yeah, um, she's pretty high and dry. Um, and we don't actually have a inclinometer, I believe that's the word, in the cockpit. Oh. And so I don't, I don't really use this one. I gauge it by the tow rail. Um, you know, are we going to dip a rail? We have never dipped a rail in 43 knots. We didn't dip a rail. Granted, we were well reefed. Well, not we were okay reefed. Could have been more. Uh, and and the, a worse case than that was when we were caught out by a compression gust off Grenada uh, in 38 knots with one reef and a full Genoa out, um, and we were caught really badly. And we couldn't. We had a a very old main sheet uh, tackle, and it, it the the jam cleat on it was sort of stuck in a way and I had to smash it out with a winch handle so we were yeah, pretty well yeah. it felt like we were laid down yeah. I remember being <sighs> being laid across the back of the boat and just sliding down <laughs> down the cockpit towards the water going whoa yeah. whoa 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 because yeah, it was almost vertical <laughs> um, and we still didn't dip a rail so mm -hmm. I think that's like yeah she's she's not easily pushed around um, and I take great comfort in that because it's yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's nice. It's a big selling point. It's a big selling point, And we often say, like, we don't sail at 100%. I like to cruise around at 80%. And it's nice to know that even if it ramps up suddenly and we get a rude shock like that, that we will not... It's just nice to feel like you can't be pushed around easily. All right, next question. Thank you for the question. Um, David. All right, David said, uh, I recall most... I recall that you almost made an offer on another boat in the first episode, and you've surely seen many similar cruising boats in the last two years. If you could go back in time and buy the boat again, would you look for different features or check the condition of things? For example, would you check out the prop alignment next time? <laughs> uh, cost increases exponentially with length. Could you have coped with a smaller but a newer boat? Hindsight's twenty twenty. What do you think now? Okay, we've, we've addressed some of these, but I think that, um, okay, so would you look for different features um, or check the condition of things? So we have addressed um, a centre cockpit, obviously. We would probably reassess that. Um, I, I wouldn't go with that. I wouldn't say it's a no. No, I agree, but... yeah. But I also think as well, I don't need a massive bedroom like we have. That's possibly... It's really nice. Stuff. It's really nice, and it's like it's very large. It takes up <laughs> half the boat. Probably don't really need that big a bedroom. I actually think that maybe about a year ago, Adam and I had a discussion saying um, most of the things that we've learnt, um, uh, you know, a year ago, we probably were probably addressed in the survey, um, and because we've learnt so much now about our boat, um, about the conditions of how things should be, how they shouldn't be. Most of those um, lessons were learned the hard way, might, yes, might I add. Yes. Um, I think that we c would have looked for so many different things um, than we just did. I, I literally walked into this boat and was like, oh, it. it's really pretty. But that's the gift Ooh. of hindsight, isn't it? So, like, yeah. you can't know, you don't know what you don't know, and when you don't know it. Um, yeah. We. You know, we we went in and we had a. I believe we were pretty across what we were looking for as far as blue water cruiser and and, and the mm. criteria, but the technical nitty gritty, the the, it's a bit like that map between knowledge and experience. Like we had all the dots, we just didn't quite know how to connect them at the time, and, and we. we I'm, I'm remiss, remiss to say, like, like the, survey the survey wasn't good, good but we, 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 we put a lot of faith, faith in the survey, survey and, and we got, got a favourable survey, survey and we were like, okay, cool, expecting to, to have that security and, and to be able to take that to the bank. In truth, most of the things that were, you know, past survey either died almost immediately after or we could never recreate the condition that was presented in the survey yeah. after the fact, like once we were on our own. Um, so... There's a, would I do things differently? Yes, absolutely. Knowing what I know now, I would be such a difficult customer buying a boat. And I'm not even sure I would pay a surveyor. Like these days, I feel like, I mean, I know not all surveys, surveyors are created equal and, and I can only comment on what I've observed in our survey, which arguably maybe wasn't great. Um, 
so I don't know what a A++ gun surveyor would know. Yeah. But if I was going to get a surveyor again, I would not get them for that security blanket. I, I would take ownership of the things that I know to verify mm. from experience now. And I, what I would expect from the surveyor is the nuanced details of the boat specifically. Yeah. Like those kind of experience that you can Agreed. only get through a lifetime of experience, which usually a good surveyor has. So I think that's what you're paying for, um, in essence. <sighs> yeah. I would probably also, an addition, um, would not rely as much on engine-driven things. Um, we were sold very much an engine-driven oh, boat. Yeah. Um, the fruit was engine-driven. Um, it just had one wind generator, um, no other forms of alternate energy, oh, water maker engine-driven. And there are so yeah. many things oh, yeah. that um, are engine-driven that was sold as a such a benefit, like, oh, yeah, but it, it can, it can um, freeze ice cream, and so you can have ice cream. Yeah, but you kind of need to run your engine like a couple of hours a day to do that. Yeah, at and what there, cost? That's right. Exactly. Um, water maker, you know, so much output. Do I need that much water though? You heard nothing. You heard, I'm going to edit that out. I can't edit that out. <laughs> it's not even that, to be honest, with the water maker. It's the fact that it lives on top of the engine. And, and when it comes into disrepair, as all water makers do, it leaks and it leaks salt water all over your engine, which yeah. then puts you in a hot water down the track from a maintenance point of view. Uh, could we go smaller? Probably. Um, I, if I have my time again, I actually think that we would have done a local try before you buy. Ooh. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe buy a boat yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And a, a really I'm small one. And see how far. Like, I, I actually want to do that as a, as like a yeah. <laughs> millennial falcon challenge. Like, buy a ba like just to prove the point. Yeah. Buy a boat in the states for like ten grand not even, for like five grand and put another couple of grand into it and just see yeah. how far I can get. <laughs> We've discussed this a few times. Safely quite fun. Like, I would love to do that. Um, we can't obviously can't afford it. But uh, as a challenge, like as a point, yeah. like a Top Gear challenge, <laughs> yeah. I would love to do that. If anyone's got a boat they want to donate that is not, <laughs> not a complete shell, but like we could, you know, yeah. do that as a challenge, yeah. let me know. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you for your question, David. JW Norton. So, would an electric drive be beneficial? The only thing that I can see would be an issue is the compressor for the fridge slash freezer. Well, as mentioned, we don't like having a um, mm -hmm. engine-driven fridge freezer, which is why we completely got rid of it. Uh, so that's fine. That would not be an issue for us. No, not anymore. Um, I would like to go. I, I, I'm totally open to it. Um, I think at this stage I would prefer hybrid. Um, that way you have like the redundancy which is just king out here um you can never have too many ways what's your saying it's not that my always, saying two, 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 uh, two, <laughs> you try, Kiara tried to say the same the other day and she said one is one is one and two is two or two is <laughs> one is one and none is none that's right one is one and what's none the real none. saying two is one and one is none i uh i'm a big fan <laughs> of that saying and um and i think a hybrid would be maybe a better way to go i think for small light boats electric is totally okay like the horsepower that they can put out and the, like the the power to weight for them is fine we're lugging around like eleven thousand pounds of iron in the keel alone then there's water diesel fuel like we are 18 tons and we have 55 horsepower in the engine if you were to switch out the engine for battery weight and solar and then put a electric drive on there i i just don't know to be honest i'm not convinced that there'd be enough horsepower and i'm not convinced that there would be enough um reliable performance when needed um yeah i'm Hybrid. not against it i haven't looked into it i think it's a i think it's the future for sure i think for now i would prefer to to keep a finger in both pies and be a hybrid <laughs> for now okay um all right, all right guys that wraps totally up the questions totally blew the budget on the on the time yep. um if you're still with us thank you for listening i hope you enjoy them if you would like to leave more questions uh and please do because we like it and it, and it's it's just some small way that we can maybe help or share yeah some experience yep. we've gained yeah uh, leave them below leave them on facebook leave them on any instagram posts pretty much when we feel the desire to do this we just go through all the socials yep. screen grab all the questions we we can and work our yeah. way through them um and if you liked this then uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe for any future episodes and any future q a's that we might do as well um and uh thank you we hope that you'll join us next time yeah thanks guys see you next week